hello everyone in this video we'll be looking at frame analysis and how we can uh, do the study on a geodesic dome that we had created in the earlier video so for this i'll get into the environments tab and here we have frame analysis okay once you click into that and uh, you you can notice that most of it is grayed out leaving us only the options of a create simulation frame analysis settings and finish frame analysis in the frame analysis settings you can change the colors of the loads constraints and gravity if you want it for your reference else we can go ahead with directly creating a simulation so for now we'll be doing a static analysis and i'll be naming it as simulation 1 itself and as soon as i get into it and create a study you will notice the entire frame structure has been reduced to lines and nodes so what inventor does is it performs the analysis on these lines and nodes which is very very uh, equivalent to performing it onto the a frame structure itself okay so now that we have access to this uh, like in inventor all applies to all studies we start from the left as we progress step by step to the right our analysis is complete correct so similarly here uh, as of now the materials have been automatically applied based on the uh, frame member that we have selected so we do not worry about that so we can go ahead and start off with by placing constraints okay now for the constraints uh, we got to be a little careful uh, it's a little uh, it's a slightly a tedious job because we got to be very very careful in selecting what we need so say for example i select the line it gives me the option of giving an offset correct so if you want to uh, give a constraint say middle of the end, uh, middle of the line so you can give the offset uh, maybe 200 so it will shift according to that so you will notice it will shift that way or this way you can choose but right now for this study what i'll do is i'll be, i will be focusing on giving constraints to these nodes so you got to be very careful while selecting these nodes okay i'm just repeating the command again and i'll be selecting everything so this is slightly uh, time consuming and uh, requires a lot of patience so be careful in the method you're selecting uh, so careful not to select any of the lines you could select lines if you really need to select lines uh, no restrictions on that of course okay so in this case i'm selecting points uh, the basically the nodes to keep it simple so i don't want to mess it up with including lines and points as well yeah just a few more nodes to be to go and i can select this this so here this issue will come up so you got to be careful and you can select it the last one and we are done so with this we have selected the constraint points or the fixed constraints all right and now you must be able to notice there is already a yellow glyph that is pointing downwards which is nothing but gravity so gravity by default is being applied on the study okay so uh, it's okay if it is applied it's good to have the effect of gravity on the uh, structure as well so now coming down to the main uh, area that is our force force also similarly you can apply it to the lines or the nodes in this case i'll be applying it to the nodes so as soon as i click a particular node you can notice it gives me the option of rotating it as well so if i want it in a particular angle I can do that as well so right now i want it normal to the uh, structure so i'm keeping it at 90 degrees itself okay and right now it is a hundred hundred newton is the load that i'm being that i'm applying okay so you can right click and you can keep the dialog box open so you don't have to uh, select again and again yeah so once i have done this just carefully select the nodes yes 100 newtons apply like so let's apply only to a few nodes and see the effect let's not apply to the entire top uh, ring okay so just so as to study how the effect is taking place all right so once this is done uh, there is no meshing required here because we're just talking about lines and nodes correct so the question of uh, meshing does not even arise all right so once this is done since i'm keeping it very simple we're just talking about constraints force force is nothing but a perpendicular load that is what i'm applying and all we can go ahead and do is click on simulate couple of seconds it should take depending on your hardware 
all right and since it's lines and nodes it pretty much does it very fast all right so this is how we get our results okay so right now if you see uh, we barely see any deformation because this is our actual deformation or actual displacement which is very very minor so if you want to have a look at it at a scaled up view you can go into actual adjusted into 0.5 so it gives us a uh, you know a slightly exaggerated uh, visual display uh, visual display of the displacement so now you can notice how the study has occurred so because we have constrained the bottom most nodes you can see it's the stiffest of all all right because it's all highlighted in blue and the where there's maximum displacement you see it is all red so since we had done only one half of the top circle nodes the other half is completely uh, I wouldn't say safe, but yeah, it still is not having too much effect of the load, right? What happens next? So again, in our uh, browser, we have on the left, we have results. Right now, we're looking at displacement. You can go ahead, check out forces as well. All right. So forces, of course, are acting only in the top section here. Okay. Then we have our moments. Moments uh, is we have not added much. Now the effect little moment load that you're seeing is because we've added it only on the one half of the top surface, right? So stresses, you can have a look, all right? Yeah, this is our stresses max. Okay. So where maximum stresses are acting, you can have a look at it. Then you also have torsional stresses, stresses as well. Okay. So here also you can notice. And of course, for everything, every uh, result that we are having a look, there is a legend on the left. So you can refer to that and you can go ahead and have a look at it. Okay, so these are the results it uh, generates for us. Now, what else, what are the other commands that we have here? Uh, one of the things that we also have is our by default is our animate. So I'll come down to displacement for that. That's the most important thing for us. Okay, and say I set it at this position, we can animate let's play it up and then we can see how the entire structure displaces for the load applied also again you can record the video out of this for your reference for your projects and you can add it as well okay then we also have something called as beam detail uh, quite interesting this is uh, what happens is all you have to do is once the dialog box is open you just have to select any beam that you want to understand and see what's happening Okay, so what happens is it gives us the diagram of the beam, basically fixed constraint three and four. So the beam that we have selected is the second or the third beam that we are working on. Now it gives us all the force uh, results there. Then any stresses details you want to check that also it will be giving us there. It will also give us a graph as well for the same. Okay, so all of these details you will be able to see. Right. So this will be highly helpful for anybody working on uh, frame structures. All right. So this can be done for any of the beams that you want. All right. So this is another beam that I'm looking at. And this is another beam that I'm looking at. All right. So you can study different any particular beam you want details. You can have a look at it. Then of course we have beam labels. Suppose you want immediate numbering. You can select on beam labels and you zoom in. You can notice this is beam number 124 this is beam number 125 so on and so forth similarly we also have for nodes as well so don't add everything on the same image uh, which tends to get crowded so anything whenever you want to identify a particular node or a beam activate it note it down uh, probably take some screenshots and it's done okay again we have our probes as well select any of the uh, members and then it will give us the details there so you can give us the displacements. In this case, we're talking about displacement. So that particular point, it gives us the displacement. All right. Yes. Uh, so this is our uh, frame analysis. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing much to, uh, nothing much in detail here. Uh, probably once you could do a couple of uh, uh, studies, I think you should get the hang of it. So if you want to exaggerate it even more. Uh, this is very uh, unrealistic, but yeah, this results in failure. But if you want to have an exaggerated look, that's how it, it will look like, right? So once this is done, we can go ahead and we can close our analysis. 
now the report generation is the same as in our other studies as well so click on report choose the format you want it in if it's in html or rich text format so remember one thing when you're generating the report uh, the position you have or the view you have placed the assembly in that's the screenshot that it will be taking all right so if you have placed half outside and half inside the uh, workspace so that's the same image you will be getting since right now i placed it in the isometric view i'll i'll be getting all the snapshots in the isometric position itself all right so you see the entire assembly is in picture i'll go down a little bit more yes so this is our most interesting important things so you have snapshots for all the stresses and results as well okay so this is how we can perform a stress analysis on a frame structure okay and in this case we have looked at uh, our geodesic frame structure hope it was of use uh, if you found it helpful uh, please do subscribe and share the word around and hit the like button as well thank you so much everyone